Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Kishore Managoli and from the archives of our Legion Library, let us study a very rare mesenchymal tumor called as picoma. Now these are mesenchymal neoplasms and they are composed of perivascular epithelioid cells, which is why it is called as the PEC in the picoma. And these are seen very easily here around the blood vessels. You can see a cluster of epithelioid cells. More interestingly, they express melanocytic as well as smooth muscle markers. And we'll be able to see some excellent slides as we go along. Now, we need to study the general features as well as the essential features. Let's look at the general features. These are widely distributed uh, anatomically. However, the most common location is the uterine corpus in the gynec tract. These present as painless masses and these are rare tumors, but definitely very more frequent in females in comparison to the males. The mean age is 45 years and most picomas are sporadic. However, a small subset is associated with tuberous sclerosis. Now, I was talking of the essential features. These are features that every histopathologist has to take note of and maybe note, uh, put a note in the sign out. It should be mentioned in the sign out as well. So these picomas are best classified as tumors of uncertain malignant potential. And for sure, this has to be part of your sign out because these can recur and these can convert into malignancies eventually. So picomas are characterized by sheets or nests of epithelioid cells with either clear cytoplasm or eosinophilic granular cytoplasm surrounded by delicate vasculature. These are the cardinal features or the essential features in order to clinch the diagnosis. They co-express melanoma and smooth muscle markers, which need to be demonstrated in every single case. There can be two other molecular subgroups not present in all cases, but they can be present one, one is related to tuberous sclerosis. The other one is the transcription factor E3 fusions. Uh, these are some of the rarer uh, versions of this tumor. However, you need to take note of that. So the gross appearance would look almost like a leomyoma. It's a well-circumscribed mass, except that you definitely don't see the whorling pattern that is so diagnostic of a leomyoma. Some of the tumors, because they express melanocytic markers, they can actually grossly be highly melanotic in appearance. Now, this is the nested epithelioid appearance that I was telling you about. You should note that these cells, these tumors are, they form well-defined nests. There are multiple nests, as you can see. And you can also note that these do not look like the spindle cells of a mesenchymal tumor. Remember that picomas are classified under the heading of soft tissue tumors or mesenchymal tumors, but they don't have the spindly appearance that you might see in a fibroma or a, a leomyoma. So these are very characteristically, they'll resemble epithelial cells, which is why they're called as epithelioid cells. And they are also separated by this pink hyalinized stroma which actually is responsible for creating this nested appearance. Now, this is a granular pink cytoplasm I was telling you about, which is very, very characteristic of picoma. So you have to go, you have to look under high power magnification. The other characteristic feature of picoma is the presence of these extremely large and prominent nucleoli, which is very commonly seen in melanomas. And um, no wonder that it expresses melanocyte-like markers. So observing this also is a very good indicator that takes you towards the diagnosis of a picoma. Now, this is the perivascular aggregation of um, epithelioid cells that I showed you in the first slide. So this is an, a, a blood vessel consisting of red blood cells. And then you have these epithelioid cells which surround the blood vessels. This is another image where we can see that sometimes the tumor cells invade the adventitia and the muscle coats of the blood vessels. However, they do not invade the endothelium. You can see the endothelial cells here, 
and when they do not in, uh, invade the endothelium, it means that they will not form tumor emboli and therefore they will not metastasize so long as they are benign. Now, this is another variant of picoma that we see and this is seen in cases with TFE 3 fusions, transcription factor E3 fusions. The only difference is instead of the granular pink cytoplasm that we see in the regular variant, this will have clear cytoplasm and the fibrosis will still be the same as with the classic picoma. So this is the HMB45, which uh, is a very good marker for melanin. And you can see the dense, strong positivity that you can see in this, you can see in almost every case of a picoma. And then you'll also have to demonstrate uh, a smooth cell marker, smooth muscle marker, uh, be it Desmin, be it Caldesmon or uh, an SMA marker. Now you can see that this is not as uh, distinctive as the HMB45. Now, as I said, this does have malignant potential and it does convert into a malignancy sometimes. And you can see these highly anaplastic cells everywhere, giant tumor, giant cells, and um, pleomorphism, abnormal mitosis, every single feature of a malignant stromal tumor, mesenchymal tumor. This is another one which shows a very good area of abnormal mitosis. Another feature that is often seen in a malignant picoma is the presence of these uh, pseudo inclusions, plenty of them. You can see these pink areas. Uh, that demonstrate pseudo inclusions. Now, malignant picomas also don't lose one property, and that is the pro the property of hyalinization. So that remains the same. However, you can see that these cells are no longer benign in appearance. Uh, they don't look like those benign epithelioid cells. They certainly look like uh, malignant cells. So. To wind up, uh, this is a sample report. This is the way uh, we reported. Uh, so we mentioned the diagnosis uh, as uterus hysterectomy specimen, a picoma of uncertain malignant potential. This is something I cannot emphasize enough. You have to mention this because this is the WHO 2020 criteria for predicting the behavior of picomas. And as a pathologist, you should always endeavor to help the clinician and um, it's always a good idea to talk to the gynecologist or the surgeon and inform that this is a picoma of uncertain malignant potential. So far as the comments, we, uh, we note that these myometrial nodules are, they consist of epithelioid cells. Um, we have these kind of images in almost every sign out so that it, uh, it gives the proof of the pudding as they say. Um, they have clear to eosinophilic granular cytoplasm and you can see the dense collagenous stroma. Uh, cytological uh, TPI usually is not present and most of the picomas are actually benign. Malignancy is rare. Uh, you can also see um, the perivascular arrangement and then you can see HMB positive. You can use other melanin markers like melan A, but HMB uh, 45 positive, more than 50 is very strongly positive. And then uh, you can use some of the smooth muscle markers like Desmin, Carl Desmond, or smooth muscle antigen um, IHC markers. So all these factors, they support the diagnosis of melanoma. Now, most of the tumors in this category have a benign clinical course. However, there is a small subset that recur and therefore you should always sign out with a recommendation uh, to the clinician uh, to follow up uh, the patient clinico-radiologically. Thanks for watching.